Howdy friends, Pete here. A couple of weeks ago I posted a four minute video about the app Cell 411, which is a perfect tool for cop lockers. And really it's a perfect tool for families, friends, and neighbors to use during emergencies to alert and respond to each other in those times of need. If you've not yet seen that video, I encourage you to click here. It's also listed in the video description. I think Cell 411 is so awesome that I wanted to share even more information with you about it. But fortunately, you won't have to listen to me drone on. You'll instead get to hear from the person who spearheaded the development of the app, Virgil Vadu. About a week ago, Virgil gave a presentation to a small group assembled at Liberty Forum, an annual event hosted by the Free State Project, which this year took place in Manchester, New Hampshire. In the talk, Virgil shares a bit about his own background and motivations for the construction of Cell 411. He also gives a tutorial on its use and alludes to some features that will be rolling out in the next versions. Enjoy. Oh, and just a reminder, if you have a smartphone that uses Android or iOS, you can download Cell 411 right now for free. Links are in the description below. The reason we started down this path was because uh, I looked at the, uh, at the activism world um, coming, from, coming from Romania and having experienced communism for so long and, and being, you know, I'm a security professional, so I, I do information security work for a living. I've been doing this for about 19 years. So I deal with encryption and secure communications and things like that on a regular basis. That's, that's how I get a paycheck. You gotta t take the lens cap off. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the, uh, uh, the idea of this lack that, I, uh, that I've, I, I've observed in the market, the lack of a, uh, uh, an app that allows activists to communicate with each other in an, an encrypted fashion without any metadata stored. So that way, you know, folks, assholes like the NSA and, and you know, governments all over the world, they can, you know, track you, read your messages, uh, you know, tag you and, and kind of, you know, treat you like livestock. There, there are no apps like that out there. Uh, there are there are folks and, and developers that they created things like the, the guy from uh, Whisper, Open Whisper. Uh, I think that's the company uh, company's name. He he built Signal, which is basically a, a it kind of meets some of these requirements. It allows you to send encrypted text messages, for example, and uh, have encrypted voice calls. Um, I think Signal replaced Red Phone. It used to be an app that did that, so it's kind of a replacement for that. Wicker is another app that, that people use to send encrypted messages to each other, uh, pictures and short videos. But there's really no app out there that allows people to form into groups securely, uh, assign each other tasks to do. If you're an activist and you know, if, you, if you're a small group of activists and want to meet somewhere at a certain uh, place to accomplish a certain task, for example, uh, you can't do that. You cannot do secure calendaring, for example. So I got this idea about a year or so ago, maybe a little over a year, about building a platform that allows activists and, and people, you don't have to be an activist. I was thinking of Christians in China, for example. You know, Christians in China get arrested for having church meetings. That's crazy. It would be nice to have a, a digital platform where you can schedule church meetings without the fear of being arrested. Again, that doesn't exist. So I got this idea of uh, building a, an app called Cell, and it's kind of a pun because, you know, the DOD has called activists like us low-level terrorists, uh, and, and they've labeled people with you know with a T word in the past, so peaceful people. So uh, I said, hey, let's let's build a platform called Cell. It allows people to build independent low-level terrorist cells and uh, organize uh, in such a way that you know we cannot be tracked or you know, tagged or you know spied upon. Right? So uh, that's the path I got on. There are some really cool tools out there, out of the box, crypto libraries that uh, would allow us to do that. And I'm still working on that project. And then last year at Porkfest, I ran into Joel, and I know there's there was a Pork 411 phone network. I still probably, there's probably still, is it still being used right now? Yeah, uh, I assume. It's still online. Okay. Uh, and then Joel uh, started talking about, you know, this app that I was working on, and then he mentioned that he was working on a project too called uh, the Pork Alert. The Pork Alert, yeah. Oh. And um, and I looked at his app, you know, and, and I was thinking, well, hey, we can probably do this, do it a little bit better. Sorry, and better. Yeah. And then we uh, we started, uh, you know, working on a new project uh, after Porkfest, and uh, here we are, you know, seven months later, 
after you know working with a nice group of developers, we came up with a decent app. Version 2.2 was released uh, two days ago, I think, and um, and I finally feel with this last version that we got the app at a place where it's mature enough to give it both thumbs up. Uh, we still we still have a couple of minor bugs in it that we've been trying to track for about two months and we can't find them. One bug is, and by the way, if you guys have problems with the app, you can always email me. Don't, don't go post negative reviews in the app store because that hurts my feelings. And, and it actually hurts the app downloads too. Um, but just email me and, and I always respond and, and work on problems if we have them. And um, this new version is, is pretty cool. We finally got to a place to where we have you know public cells, this idea that you can have uh, a group that is publicly viewable. Everyone within a 50 mile radius gets alerted when you create a public cell. They get a pop up. I don't know if you guys got a pop up today about I just spun up a Liberty Forum 2016 cell and a bunch of people joined it already. So it's very handy if you're in an area where you don't have friends. You don't have to exchange email addresses and scan QR codes with people. It's kind of cumbersome to do that. You can still have private groups as well, but uh, you don't have to anymore. Uh, the disadvantage of having public cells is that uh, it's, they're public, publicly viewable, so a cop could, in theory, you know, load the app on his phone, you know, pull up uh, cell for on once, you know, load up the Liberty Forum 2016 cell, and he can see all the members of the group, right? So if you're concerned with privacy, that's a problem. So you may not want to use public cells. Um, so that's kind of the history of the app, and uh, it's, come, it's been coming along pretty well. Peacekeeper uh, is an app that I heard about, I think after Pork, uh, Porkfest last year, and uh, you know, and it used to be in the App Store, and I downloaded it, and I was trying to use it, and I couldn't even create an account, and apparently it's, it's been having problems, and they pulled it out of the App Store completely. So for now, uh, this is kind of the only I'm trying to get for here. There's a uh, there are a couple of other apps, believe it or not, along these lines. One is in Pakistan, it's called Mohaviz, and one is in Iran, it's called Gershad. And the Gershad app is really interesting. It's built upon the same principles, but Iran has a thing called morality police, where they will stop women on the street. Cops will start stop women to measure their dresses, you know, make sure that you know your face is completely covered. All kinds of crazy, crazy religious stuff like that. So um, apparently developers in Iran built an app like that and you can tag, you can drop pins on a map where the cops are so you can avoid them and go around them. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. Sim similar ideas. Um, and then the one in Pakistan is, uh, is similar to sending alerts in emergencies and you know dropping you know, police checkpoints on a map and things like that. So that's really when cell phone one came, came about I just wanted I just wanted to make it better easier, intuitive, fast, and actually get, get something that works. And, but build it from a, from a liberty perspective, right? Not just have a, another app out there that does X, Y, Z, right? Uh, because it's, it's easy to do that. But if you, don't, if you don't build something like that with liberty principles in mind, it's kind of hard to, uh, for me to justify it. You know? So it is kind of a labor of love. I spent a lot of time and money on it, but uh, and there's no money in this, by the way. So. It's not like I'm getting rich off of it, but uh, that's the history of it. So uh, we have, as of last night, we have 5,100 active users on it, which is awesome. So for you know six months or so of, of you know since it came out, I'm pretty happy about that. We got 1,000 users just in the last five days, which is awesome. So that's huge. I don't know. I think it was your video that you put out that kind of got people out there to, to use it. So that's great. Um, that's between both Android and iPhone users. Um, so obviously, the more people use it, the better. You know, the, the more popular it will get, and uh, you know, it, it, it has one of these. It's one of these apps that has the ability to, to become viral because if ten people use it, they tell ten of their friends, and then they tell their friends, so it can kind of snowball from there. And I'm hoping that's going to happen because it can really help you, I think, especially activists. Um, besides that, since I don't have a projector, it's kind of hard to talk about how to use it. Do you guys all have it installed on your phones? Um, do you have any questions about how to use it? Because some, some folks may have problems. You, you were having problems with it. I was, and I really okay. appreciate your help on that. Right. So, um, 
it's pretty simple. You pop it open. It has a menu. Uh, by the way, if you want your picture in Yam, um, there is a uh, website. And by the way, uh, if you go into the options screen, the, all the way at the bottom, there's an FAQ list. So if you want to read all the, the you know, frequently asked questions of the app, uh, it will cover most of the uh, most of the questions that you have. So um, there's a website called Gravatar.com that you can go to and upload your picture. And um, Gravatar.com is related to um, uh, the, the WordPress. Yeah, so it's a WordPress site where you know if you can you can display your picture on comments and your, your blog and so on. Uh, and we're using their database for pictures. So, so if you have a Gravatar account, you'll get your picture up. You'll get imported into the app automatically. You don't have to pay. Um, but um, the biggest, the, the two biggest uh, questions really asked are: one is what is patrol mode. And the screen icon on the screen is actually, uh, it will allow you to enable and disable patrol mode. Um, and patrol mode is um, another attempt to basically get folks to help strangers. So if you have patrol mode, mode enabled, uh, which comes enabled by default, and someone, let's say, uh, you know, 10 miles down the street breaks down, they have no idea who Virgil is or Pete is, and they issue an alert, uh, you know, it, it has to be a global alert. Right, so uh, they issue a global alert. Everyone within a 50-mile radius will get it. I will receive it. I have no idea who this person is, but if I choose to go help them, I can. And this uh, will later, hopefully in version three, will integrate with payments. So the idea is that we, you know, if you issue an alert and want to have, a, you know, make an offer to, you know, for payment to a first responder, let's say you get a flat tire or you feel in danger in the neighborhood and someone comes you know, to comfort you or make you feel better or replace your tire or whatever problem you have, you can actually you know, place a payment on that offer and you know, give them 20 bucks in cash or maybe pay them in Bitcoin or whatever. So that's the plan. And I think that's, that's how an emergency market would most likely work in a voluntary society, I'm hoping. Um, so uh, that's, that's the thinking behind that. Uh, if you don't want to get these types of alerts from strangers, just uh, just turn uh, uh, turn patrol mode off. Just tap the icon or go into the options screen and turn it off. So, uh, and then the uh, the other question I get a lot is about dispatch mode. And if you go into the options screen in settings, and by the way, let's see here. Uh, this is the setting icons right here in the upper right hand right hand corner. And go into options. And if you scroll down, there's a section called Dispatch Mode. The reason that feature exists, that actually is turned off by default. Um, there's a volunteer fire department in Tennessee, and they messaged me when version 1 came out. Version 1 was really lame, by the way, but it worked. It still sent out alerts and you know, have the basic features. But uh, these, these firefighters said, we love your app. We can't afford to have a dispatcher hired all the time, but how can we leverage your app to dispatch, dispatch our department from fires? Because we're in a very small neighborhood, small, small village. So we got this idea about a dispatch mode, right, which you, you can enable. And once you enable it, you actually uh, will have the ability to issue alerts with a location other than your current location. So let's say you want to issue a, a fire alert. You actually get prompted. You can drag the map around with the exact location of your alert, right? And then you can pick location, and then you get prompted with your cell to actually send an alert to. So that allows you to be basically function as a dispatcher for someone. And uh, it's awesome because we basically have one fire department using cell 411 for dispatching, which is great. They don't need to hire anyone, it's free, it doesn't cost them anything. So uh, it's, a, it's, it's a pretty cool feature that came about again from people uh, reaching out and asking how to, uh, how to improve the app. Um, besides that, uh, I think, I feel like the app is very intuitive. Uh, Mark Edge doesn't, apparently is unable to use it, so I have to give him a hard time about it. But uh, <laughs> it's, um, if you want to add friends, you go into the friends tab here in the options screen. You can add friends either manually, you can tap on the add friends icon, 
or you can generate a QR code to be scanned by another one, another person who wants to add you as a friend, or just uh, scan a QR code yourself if you want to add a manual. And then you go into the cell screen, and you have a bunch of cells that you created by hand. Um, if you go into a cell, you can actually tap on a name, and the check mark will show up right next to the name of the person who wants to, uh, you know, you want to be part of that cell. So that's handy as well. Um, and of course, this new feature actually on top, you have a public sales button, uh, which uh, is my favorite feature now, because it allows you to uh, create public sales. They get broadcast to everyone. Uh, you can even explore sales on top here, and all the sales within the area will show up. If you want to join a cell, there's ability to join a cell that is not local. So let's say you want to join uh, a cell that is in Mexico. You have to tap, and we did this on purpose because we don't want people to start spamming cell owners with join requests unless they know the exact name of the cell. So you can just tap on exact match, and you have to type in the cell's name. It's case sensitive as it, as it, as it actually spells. So that's the only way to join a cell that you're that does not exist in your area if you want to do that. And assuming the owner of the cell allows you to. Um, if you uh, if you own cells, you can actually just tap on one. You can see all the members. If people are being jerks, you can just click, you know, kick them off. You can just remove them from a cell if they're spamming you all, or you don't know who they are, or there's some, you know, personal issue going on there. You don't want them to be part of your cell anymore. Uh, that may happen. And we also added a, an official request uh, or verified verified cell type of feature where there's a green check mark next to the cell. The reason I did that is. Uh, I can see how, can, uh, how, how cells can actually uh, start become being, uh, I don't know, uh, let, let's say someone could create an official cop block cell, but they have nothing to do with cop block, right? Uh, and that could be a problem. And, um, and there's a way to, uh, to actually get cells verified. If you go into the cell name and you can click on request verification, and uh, unfortunately, there's no way to streamline that. Uh, you'll have to be me or one of my developers get in touch with whoever made the request to make a reasonable attempt to verify that, yes, you know, you really are you know, with cop block, whatever that means, or you're not a cop. Or, uh, it's not a perfect process, but it's, it's what we have uh, for now. Uh, under the account tab, you can actually update your name, cell, uh, cell phone number, you know, emergency contact, contact name and, and phone number. These are actually important because if you don't have a real name in there, uh, the people that receive your alerts are going to get confused. They may not know who this is. Some people just put initials in there, and that's fine, but I'm just saying, you know, keep that in mind. And your emergency contact and, and uh, phone number, you might want to put them in there as well because if uh, in an emergency, the people that receive your uh, your alert also get prompted to con to call your emergency contact to if they want to. So if you don't have a contact listed in your account settings, they may not be able to get a hold of anyone that knows you. That's just a thought. And then we also added like blood type, uh, you know, medical conditions. You know, I, I put in. Uh, that's amazing. Thank you. That, yeah. that stuff's like extremely right. Helpful. So the plan is when you issue a medical alert. Um, like a medical emergency alert, uh, these these things will actually flash on the screen just in case you pass out or something happens. Uh, so if someone finds you with your cell phone in your hand, you know they'll know, hey, virtual mass seizures, you know, which I do. That's why I have idiopathic seizures in there, or his blood type is whatever, and you know they may be able to do something with that information, right, in case of emergencies. And then um, under alerts, uh, you can actually. Uh, list all your historical alerts here. I think we only list the previous 20 alerts. I can't remember how many. That's a shortcoming of the app. I'd like to increase that, maybe show previous 100 alerts, uh, just in case. And if you do stream video, you'll actually see a video alert here with the download button right next to it, so you can actually download your footage to your device uh, if you want to do that. The footage, when you stream video from the app, the footage gets stored to an Amazon server uh, that I own, that I manage, nobody else has access to it. Uh, you cannot delete the video, so keep that in mind. I'm not going to go delete it for you unless it's some major emergency and you want the video gone or something like that. Um, and uh, also in the options screen, with related to video footage, there's a button called Delete Video Option. It's a, it's a uh, flip switch. And what that allows you to do when you have it enabled actually creates a fake delete button right next to the video 
uh, footage recorded. So if you're under duress, you can actually, let's say a police officer is forcing you to delete, delete the video. You know, uh, you don't have to argue with him, or get in an argument, or fight with him, or whatever. Just say, you know, look, I'm deleting it, just tap on the delete button. The alert is gone, and uh, assuming the cop is not very familiar with the app, which most likely he wouldn't be, I'm hoping. Uh, you know, that's a hope. It's a misleading feature that may get you out of a jam. That's really the, the video. Um, that's really the app in a, in a, you know, in a, what, 15 minute chat, basically. Uh, there are other, if you go into the action screen, there are a lot of other uh, features like social media sharing. Um, I turn that off by default because it can be annoying once you issue an alert, you get prompted to share it on Facebook and Twitter. I don't want to do that, but if people want to do that, you can enable that feature. You can do it. Uh, there, are, there are also some GPS uh, buttons in here that I don't recommend you mess with. Just leave all, all of them on. If you don't want GPS enabled on your phone, just turn turn the global location services off into uh, into your phone, like I, iOS or Android. And don't mess with these buttons here because they will break the app. You know, in fact, I would probably like to take this off eventually. Uh, there's also a blocked users and spammers list. So if a user keeps sending spam alerts, you can just block them and mark the spammer. And then there's an FAQ section here that will take you to the uh, to the website to the frequently asked questions. That's pretty much it. It's it's a pretty straightforward app. On the main screen, there's a uh, an icon that will center the screen for you. If you lose, if you drive, that will help you bring it into the center again. And then we have a you know know your rights flyer that Comlock uh, has been printing for a number of years here. So if you want a quick review of what your rights are when you interact with police, they're right here. So you don't have to look anything up, anything else online. Um, so that's really it. It's it's pretty straightforward. I try to make it simple enough to where it's intuitive and not very difficult to use. So do you guys have any questions about it? Because we have some cool, yes? Yeah, so about the alerts, the one thing that's been sort of frustrating when I've come in contact with those has been, I don't know, sometimes I don't get, I don't get to them right away. I don't know if they're current, right? So it's just the backlog of alerts, and it would be nice for the person to issues the alert to be able to say resolved. It is. There's actually, once you issue, once you issue an alert, there will be an OK button. That will show up in the radial menu on the screen there. So does that show up in the... Um... It shows up as part of this circle menu on the main screen. So, so I can actually issue a test alert right now and I'll show you. So all these alerts here on the lock, yes. is there a way of getting that to say it's resolved? That's a result. good point. I don't know if, if the whole case that shows up, but I can show you right now. Yeah, I don't. I just issued an alert, and there's actually it's a purple button. You see it on the screen? Yeah. When we used that, we saw that it was actually a very good uptake for Resolve, because when I was see, testing it, we okay. would then yeah, immediately press OK with okay. a note, and everyone would be like, oh, OK, it was a right. test, and it's OK, because it was right. just a test. But that's a good idea. I think we can probably make that more prominent. Uh, you know, yeah. say we're okay. And uh, some, especially sometimes some people might not, like buy people might issue alerts right. somewhere simultaneously. It would be nice to be able to look under the list of alerts and then the highlighted ones are still pending kind of thing. All the other right. ones are old. And uh, the way the directional thing works, I, th I remember someone issued some alert and I hit that and I accidentally hit out of it and then all of a sudden, where, where's the guy? Yeah, that's another issue. Um, and right now there, there, was, there were specific technical reasons why in the alert screen, you couldn't just put up a pull up an, an alert because if it expires, someone could, in theory, go through and say, "Oh, you know, so virtual was at this location at X time." You know, so it was kind of a privacy concern, but at the same time, if you issue an alert, you kind of abandon your privacy concerns, exactly. right? With your what your exact location yes. is. So yeah, those are both good, really good points, mm -hmm. and they are shortcomings right now that I would like to yeah. resolve. So if you, if it could be where all current alerts on that list were highlighted. And I guess they just naturally have an expiration because if someone forgets to say them all, okay, then like three right. weeks later, I'm yeah, still yeah, yeah. probably still being pulled over at that. <laughs> so what would, what would be? A, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or maybe so, a timestamp. Yes. Mm -hmm. What would be the timestamp does show up on the screen, but there's yeah. no. What would be an, an, uh, an acceptable time for an alert to be like expired? Like um, an hour. 
up to a couple hours, three hours. I don't hours. know which 12 hours. 12 because hours. Because depending on what it is, it could be a long process to really get the result. Yeah, that's true. Might eventually need more hands, okay. or people might need to tag out. I guess a maximum of 12 hours. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah maybe check how we is doing because. In vice versa, there is confirmation if there is police, somebody can sum up that he also saw police. And then after some time, they probably just remove it. So, you know, right. how do they do it? Yeah. So, they go to go back to the geolocation of current alerts. So, say that five people issue alerts, I'm like, I, uh, where do I go? And then I look, I'm like, I'm, I'm going to do this one because I know this guy, I know, you know, or it's closer to me. And then, you just hit it and then you can go there instead of, oh, I, I missed the window, I can't respond anymore. That, yeah, and that, that's a real problem. And, and we've got these comments from people. That, that's one problem, one big complaint from folks, which it should be fairly easy to, to resolve. Mm -hmm. And then the other one is, is this bug we've been chasing for like two months is where people receive multiple alerts and someone issues one alert. So I issue one alert and then Jamie will get like five, of, five alerts on her screen. Like yeah. she has to keep you know tapping, okay, okay, okay. Uh, and I don't know what that bug is. Uh, the developers don't either. I, I don't know if it's a problem with because Amazon is, ho is hosting our infrastructure. They handle the database. They also handle the G uh, GSM push requests. These are all these are all push requests on, on the network. So uh, it could be a problem with them. Uh, but we'll figure it out. I mean, I put a bounty on that bug. So whoever mm -hmm. fixes it, they'll get paid. <laughs> exactly. No yeah. question about the, the streaming video. A couple yeah. times I received it and I have been unable to view it and it might have been like a connection problem. I can't can't know for sure. Yeah. But so just the question, it's streaming currently, right? So if someone says someone's streaming video watch, it's gonna to be to the current the current video feed. Is that right? If it's live, yes. And so after it's not live, then it's just the same video. Yes, after it's not after the video after the the streamer stops, you know, or the stream is broken. The footage will actually get saved on a server, mm -hmm. and then uh, you will show up as an alert in your alert screen, mm -hmm. and you can actually download it and watch it on your device if you yeah. wanted to from the beginning. So maybe so you don't have to watch it live necessarily to watch the footage. Exactly. Maybe it would be a good idea to encourage users while we're trying to fix those other uh, outstanding issues. To uh, it seems like there's more functionality with the video, so maybe encourage people to always do video in the beginning so because that that provides all this information right. that's harder to to find out from you know right. for example if, if they're being stopped they're like i'm stopped here's the street signs here's where it is on my gps or right. whatever so then people who accidentally click out they can still look at the video and be like oh now you where it is. it's hard to manage all these issues at the same time right because <laughs> and even like other problems we've run into is someone will issue an alert and then they start streaming right out because you get prompted do you want to start streaming video you start streaming video and then you know your users can start watching your friends and then in the middle of streaming video someone responds to an alert or some, someone calls back which actually breaks the video feed on certain phones it depend, depends on them and that's another problem right all these devices function differently exactly. so there's all these things are great ideas but when you actually sit down and technically start try to solve them it's a pain in the ass of course because like the public cells it sounds like a great idea it took us like three months to figure out to do it because of all the workflow you deal with ownerships you know rights and who can kick out who and who wants to sell and all that it's really a pain mm -hmm. but yeah that's that's uh, the streaming video issue the workflow of the process uh, it can be pretty painful depending on how you do it and you, you can't get it right I think no matter what you do I think you just probably make it better that's it so uh, yeah and, and sometimes uh, you know phones you may have uh, half a bar on your phone you know, like very poor coverage and then uh, if someone is streaming you're trying to watch it and the video gets choppy and you don't know if it's a problem on the sender's end you know and, and to be honest with you, I was telling someone uh, today at lunch about the fact that it's amazing this shit actually works at all. You know, it really is. I mean, considering what, what where technology has come, uh, you know, it, the fact that it works as well as it does, it's, it's pretty mind-blowing. So, uh, I think it can be improved. Uh, we've talked about switching the live video uh, streams to YouTube. Because right now I'm paying a licensing fee to Wowza, which is a streaming engine. You know, I have to host a server in Amazon and deal with all that crap. So uh, it's not only expensive, it's just a pain, you know, to encode it on the device end. And we're using an open source library to, to do the encoding, which is like a 
four-year-old library. It has been updated in four years, so it has problems. We can even do HD video, so that's a problem too. So there are a lot of things to improve on. Uh, it's just going to take some time, you know, because every issue, every idea that we've talked about is probably like one week worth of work or more. So, so you know, so that's the plan. And we have version three, and I have I had some list here of things to, to do, and, and I think version three is going to we're going to fix a lot of these issues. And we're going to have a couple of really cool features. One being a, a protest mode, so that way you're you can just uh, tap on it, enable it. If you're in a street protest, uh, you know, with thousands of people around you and your friends, you get separated from them. Uh, they all get notified. The old the protest mode gets enabled on all their devices, and then you get a uh, basically on the map uh, within a mile radius, you get a, uh, an icon with the location, the exact location of where your friends are, you know, what the distance is from them, you know, which way you should walk to get to them. So I think if you, uh, if you're in a situation where you get split out from your cell and want to, you know, know exactly where they are and they allow you to, to see their location, that would be really handy, you know, in a street, street situation. Yes. I want to say one really great thing is that um, I have someone in North Carolina and myself and she definitely got all my alerts, and that was really great. That is yeah. awesome. Just information, even if she couldn't she come She got out. even, well, she didn't, this is when we talk about the streaming video where they got audio video, video okay. which I, it seems like it fixed it maybe as best you can, because it takes in the ass and everything. It's still a great new product. I really like it. I appreciate that you're so open and willing right. to. It's cool. wonderful. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks. And, and the video audio thing, I don't know what's going on there. That's the only report I heard of. That's um, fine. And the thing is, like, so, it's good that these things work when they do, and right. I understand when it doesn't. And, and yeah, oh. it's part of dealing with unpredictable networks like wireless networks. Yeah. You know, AT and T Verizon. It's really no guarantee of where you're going to get signal. People don't realize. A lot of folks, average users, they don't understand how these things work. You know, like I'm, I'm here in the room. If I can do a GPS poll on my phone, it shows me up by the river somewhere. The reason for that most likely is you, the, the GPS satellite will send a signal through. It bounces around in this room, you know, a bunch of times off the walls and glass and so on. And that delay gets calculated by my phone as, as being, you know, who knows, like a thousand yards that way because there's a delay introduced. So my location is completely miscalculated based on the fact that I'm just, you know, 20 feet from that glass window. So technology, when it works, is great. You know, we're not, we are indoors. You have major communication problems. You know, the tower could be who knows where. You step behind the wall, you get no coverage. Right, right. even that, right. Um, yeah. Or you're streaming. Let's say you're recording a police stop and you're following the cops around. You walk one block over, you lose, you lose signal, right? You know, that's not necessarily an app problem. It's a network problem. So it's very difficult to write an app that is reliable and takes all these things into account. Uh, it's not an easy thing. So um, we're working through it. And, and I think there are, I recognize there are problems with it, but uh, we've come a long way just it's a concept alone on the back of it does work. Yeah. It's amazing. And um, some of us were thinking about using it for forecast too. The people that have good network yeah. up there can do it yourselves and it's an easier way to talk about right. networking. And yeah. we were already Control like, talking too. So you can have all the security people just show up on the campground. Yeah. Like, oh, there you are. Can you come over here? That'd be that'd be great. Yeah. Like, if you meet any of us, it'd be wonderful if you knew where we are. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's pretty cool. So, see, that's a great idea. Use it for 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 exactly. or uh, you just, know. This tool is amazing. A lot of us were. If we have the ingenuity, we can use your framework to really do anything. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. No, yeah I I I've thought. Like, God damn, you're free. It's amazing. I know. Free. So thank you. It, it's really, it's really. I, I think it's a great tool that you can. It can I, I was talking to Jamie. It can really change the world. If millions of people start using a tool like this, think about it. Well, the it thing can is, make like, cops there are numerous volunteer firefighters for small towns in New Hampshire. Right. And I used to live in a place where the ambulance got lost where I lived, and my roommate. Had, Thank God we lived in a small community and people knew us and there right. were also EMTs that lived on the lake that we were at and went and got her in a truck and then brought her to the A. But that they was, didn't have GPS coordinates. No. Right. So Exactly. And that's it's it's a really good communication tool for small communities too. Right. If you're going to make your own network of the voluntary things, from fire department to EMS to security, yeah. neighborhood watch, police even. Right. Um, that's amazing. Yeah, and that's my hope. I was on Great Talk Live talking to the guys last night, and one thing I would like to do, I would actually like to partner up with police departments to use it in a one-way situation where if there is a road closure, 
you know, if there's an accident, you know, cops should have the ability to send, you know, a, a global, yeah, a global alert to everyone in, in town, and you get it. I know Main Street is close to this corner, you know. Yeah, go around, right? Yeah. Right now, they don't really. I, they I have no way of doing it. They don't. Yeah. So by the way, they do kind of. Have you used Waze much? Yeah, yeah, I use Waze. I know public, they're like, for example, New Hampshire Department of Transportation uses Waze when they have a construction meeting. They throw That's cool. up there. But, yeah, go for, go for the but. The cops also <laughs> use it too. Some of them know when they're tagged, and some of them move yeah. around too. Right. Yeah, they, they, they know they when they're tagged. Yeah. They do rotate. Right. And that's one, another feature I want to add in the like app. A one way option for them, just you can send messages. Right. We can't do no, anything yeah, else. We can't have people snitch on, yeah. uh, on your neighbor using the app. Well, a lot of times, if you're doing voluntary things like that, you open yourself up to a lot of liability. And there are Samaritan laws. That actually comes up all the time. The first exactly. thing I see every, like, every few days, you share a comment being like, is this it is widely illegal? Yeah, like, yeah. people are like, this is a felony, don't use this app. This, uh, this will get you killed or get you in trouble. And that's or get really, you arrested when you walk by someone that you just don't have the time to get from CPR if you're a I first know. responder. Right. And it's like, sometimes I just don't have the time for you. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it, I think it's ignorance and, and people, I, I don't know, cop lovers, they, yeah. they, they just love what, what the cops do. And they don't, they, they are so brainwashed, they don't see any other alternatives to helping people, right? And the Good Samaritan laws are actually a good point because I think almost every state in the U.S. has a law that will probably exempt you from civil liability if you attempt in good faith to help. But if you, like for Vermont, if you are a trained and first responder at CPR AED, you are legally responsible to help them. And there's a lot of times where they will teach babysitters, like children, teenagers, preteens how to do first responder things like that for children. But they yeah. don't actually give them the cards because then they are legally they liable. Become, and then yeah. you have several 12 to 15 year olds that are yeah. catching cases because, yeah. Well, so that's a good reminder for me to stay out of Vermont. Well, well there's several other places too. Like are there any uh, like formal response teams besides just the firefighters? Uh, I don't know what you mean by response teams, but in the last, uh, I mean, <coughs> this version came out uh, 24 hours ago, and there's already 50 public cells created uh, within the database. 50 what? 50 public cells, so I mean, technically these are responder teams, I guess. So, um, yeah, I mean, people, the, the idea of the app is that people organize themselves spontaneously. There are no official groups, so to speak. So if there are, I don't know who they are. You know, I don't try to understand who the, who the users are or you know, look them up or try to do you know, res, you know, reporting on them to understand who. Now, the, the reason I know about the volunteer fire, fire department in Tennessee uh, is because they actually contacted me and they told me they were using the app and they wanted a list of features you know, to improve and add into the app. But uh, they are the only group that I know that are actual, I guess they're considered government that no, they're actually using the app. Uh, but my goal is to, to, you know, the more people use this, the better, because, you know, I mean, we had, uh, I think, 18,000 alerts sent in the last six months through the platform. So to me, that's 18,000 fewer police 911 calls, maybe. I don't know. I'm, I'm estimating. I'm guessing here. So the less I have to interact with cops, to me, it's the better I am, right? I, I don't want to deal with cops. Now, when it comes to major medical emergencies, obviously, I would recommend you call 911 and you know it, get get medical help, depending on where you are. I don't know. In Detroit, it will take you 45 minutes to wait to get help. Have you, I've always wondered this about free apps. Uh, have you considered any monetization models? And if so, what have you considered? Yeah, yeah actually, we've talked about that in the last couple of days. Uh, and, and one thing I would like to get is, uh, and I don't know how profitable this would be, but this is what Waze is doing. Waze is actually placing, uh, they partner up with KFC or Target or you know, places like that, and they will actually throw an icon on the map. Yeah, and you tap on, it's like a sort of an advertisement. Yeah, you know, those you are tap the on, the hyperlocal alert. Yes, yeah. yes, do, do things like that. Maybe even have a feature where in options you can enable it, and you can get uh, alerts if you opt in to, uh, Target has a sale, you know, 50% off their drivers or something this week. I don't know, but you can save money, right? Those are some ideas. You know, if this actually competes with police, like actually, 
I mean, police are getting paid full time right. to serve and protect. So maybe in a not too distant future, users like major full time users right. of cell four one one could get paid to serve and protect full time. Why not? I like your thoughts on this. Why not? I mean, that's that's the that, I think that's the future of policing, and then a voluntary world. That's that's how protection services will really yeah. work. It's kind of like Uber for yeah. for emergencies. Yeah. That's so really if, I, if I wanted to be a full time security person and I wanted to have a profile on 411 that right. shows people my credentials and tells them what I can do, well maybe I'd pay you 20 bucks a month sure. to list my profile yeah. there. I'd pay 40 bucks. I would too, yeah. I would. <laughs> so that's great. I don't know, I, I think we're far from that. I don't think honestly the world, most of the world is ready for something like this. Most people out there, you know, like Adamo says, in the slave world, you know, he, he likes to use that phrase. Most people out there are not, uh, are not minded in kind of like, we are, you know, they, they don't think in these terms, they don't, they don't understand, they're slaves. I mean, I hate to say that, they are, they're bound to this mentality that only government employees can help you, uh, which is crazy. And in the same breath, those who uh, call themselves conservatives will admit, well, but I carry a gun with me all the time for my, my own protection, right? They can't marry these two ideas together for some reason, so I don't know. But there's hope. I think they'll come around. I think so. I think so. I like to, to think positively. Yeah, because the other night, like actually, um, in our neighborhood, it, at night, uh, we start hear like we start hearing screaming and all of these things, and we look out the window, and I'll be damned if there isn't a fight going on in the alley behind our house, and people are gathering around and screaming, and it's scary. Right. And um, somebody down there, out of desperation to stop the fight calls 911, the police show up and immediately tell everybody, take your hands out of your pockets. Right. And it's just like, I think if there's any option that someday comes across these people's radar that doesn't involve someone showing up and saying, take your hands out of right. your goddamn pockets, right. they're, they're, I think they're going to gravitate toward that. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah, and especially I even had uh, uh, people who uh, deal drugs talk to me about the app, they're like, hey, we love this, you know, we gotta figure out a way how to, you know, how to use it to keep ourselves safe. And I'm like, hey, black market for the win, I love it. So, I don't have a problem with it. It's, uh, if, if it keeps you safe, if it makes the world safer, I have no issue. It's, it's really what the goal of this was for me. So, yes, sir. Uh, is there some sort of mechanism in place uh, to prevent people from uh, going to an incident where it might be ill-advised, like uh, maybe there's yeah. some sort of hazmat uh, in the air, and now all of a sudden you have hundreds of people coming to a geolocation. Um, you know, examples in public safety where it's actually in our best interest to disperse. To not to stay away. Yeah. Yeah, to stay away. Right? Well, I think there's really no way to, to manage that other than using the app again if someone is aware of a problem, just yeah. like waste. You can functions. label them, though. You yeah. label alert saying minimal or first responders only, right. people that have experience. Yep. You can do or no. you could even have another type of alert that, you know, once you realize this is a hazardous area or a place to be in, you can just issue another alert that says, you know, stay away, you know, there's a you know, train derailed and there's chlorine gas leaking in here. Right. Like that, right. So that's a great idea. It's a great suggestion. Yeah. Yeah, my biggest fear would be to see hundreds of people flocking to a specific location, intersection, and right. Now everybody's been contaminated or... And another exposed. concern, yeah, that's a good point. And, and another concern I got from people was uh, basically what if you send a global alert out and uh, you have, you know, two thugs, they give you an alert, two thugs show up because you have a, you're a single female, right, on the side of the road, you know, you have no gun on you, two, two strangers show up ready to rob you. It's just theoretical, right? What happens? Well, and, and people love to throw this argument out to discredit, you know, the idea of self-reliance. Well, the problem is that can happen today. And it happens. It has happened in the past, you know. You know, you have people driving down the road, they see a, a single female, they, you know, if they're malicious users, they're going to do what they always do. It doesn't matter. You don't need an app to take advantage of someone or hurt, hurt someone or steal from them, right? So it's, it's happened in the past. So no, I don't think this app will, will lead to people getting killed. I bet someone that said that. Yeah. You're going to get people killed with this. Well, Worst first thinking never solves anything. It's I usually know. just more things to make you not want to leave the house. I mean, 911 gets people killed all the time. So this is why cops and EMTs are generally tandem because the cops are there to protect the EMT. Hmm. Okay. 
<laughs> right. It happens. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But so you're it's not in your right mind, and you have a medical situation. People are coming at you. You might not be prepared for that. You might not be in the right space. Right. And all those things. So this is why they have to have they have to have protection of right. police. And are you an EMT? I am a licensed New Hampshire security guard that has first responder stuff that okay. works closely with other volunteers that do things like that. That's why. I, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so in a, in, a, in a voluntary world where this is, this platform is being used by everyone, I envision a world where, like you were saying, you know, uh, people, I can go buy my own ambulance, mm -hmm. you know, buy my own Narcan if I want, and, you know, be trained, you know, train myself, be educated, and then, you know, if I get global alerts, you, you get, you know, 10 global alerts a night, if every user is willing to pay 50 bucks per alert, you know, that's 500 bucks a night, I, I would take that to be... That's not that's not a bad way to make money if, if you're passionate about that. Uh, so uh, there are plenty of ways to monetize this. Right now, I'm basically in the hole, you know, 150, 200 bucks a month for all the hosting stuff. I can deal with that. It's yeah, it's a labor of love. It's okay, you know. But uh, eventually, I would love to uh, you know to get get a get a way to to pay you know, pay for itself, you know, if possible, or maybe get someone like. Uh, you know, we're talking about Facebook being interested in this and, you know, saying, hey, we're going to step in, we're going to give you guys all the hosting uh, infrastructure, Google or something like that, and, you know, it's a great idea. Or maybe merge it with Waze, you know, create a unified app where, you know, it can alert from within Waze or something like that. What I, I really like is the media option to share, because a lot of us use Signal, so you can send right. the alerts through Signal, mm -hmm. and that's really helpful. And actually, that's a great point because Signal has an open API. So in theory, we could we could actually write messages in cell phone on one and have them receive yeah. the signal on the other hand. That's, so that's possible. You do those notes about oh, scary train overturn. Right. Anyone with Signal can get that alert. Get, get go. Oh, well, I'm right. not equipped for this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, does this platform address patient consent, like with a medical emergency, and their um, who they consent to providing care to them and ensuring yeah. that they're getting the best treatment. That's a good point. And so ensuring that, you know, if there's 50 EMT or medical providers out there, how does that patient ensure that they're getting the best quality? Is there a quality control aspect? If you're not conscious, you actually might be able to answer this better. If, you're, if you encounter someone unconscious, you're going to treat them with their consent or not, correct? They're not. How do you send the alert if you're not conscious? When you're passing out, so it's, it's, in, it's implied consent. Exactly. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a good point. So a lot of about half of your question relates to HIPAA, which is a government regulation, which I don't care about, right? So uh, HIPAA, technically speaking, this app is in violation of HIPAA because if you put your data in, like I typed in, you know, my blood type and the fact that I have idiopathic seizures, right? right? But you're it's, consenting to that because you put your information. I'm putting so it in, but that. on the back end, it's not stored in an encrypted fashion, which is a violation of HIPAA. But honestly, I don't care. So, uh, and, and users usually know, you know, that we're not storing things encrypted. It's actually, I think, it's in the FAQ too. Um, but once you get, I mean, if you're going to start getting into very detailed medical medical data, like. Uh, I don't know, things like, let's say I have AIDS, maybe I don't want everyone to know that I, you know, I have HIV. You know, probably that's not something you want to put in an app like this. I'm just saying, you know. You could put a note about anyone treating me, please use personal attack. Yes, or put equipment. something like that, yes. Yeah. So, uh, but these are great questions. Again, I, I don't know, I'm not a you know trained medical professional, so I don't know if someone's unconscious, like you send a medical alert and you pass out. So I don't know how to deal with that. I mean, I would definitely try to help someone, but, uh, you know, if you're passed out and you're bleeding all over the place and you need a tourniquet or something, I don't know. I assume you're going to help someone out, right? You don't want to. <coughs> Implied consent is essentially the rule that what would I want someone to do to me if I were in that position? Right. And unconscious or bleeding over whatever the situation is. Yeah, and it goes back to the law we we're talking about. What if I give someone CPR? You know, and I break all their ribs, you know, or something like that, and then they try to sue me in a civil court because I hurt them while saving their lives. Well, technically, again, in most states, I, I'm immune from, you know, I mean, I'm exempt from civil liability if, in good faith, I give help to the folks. Uh, now, other countries, I don't know how they deal with that, but in most states, you're you're okay you know, if you're not trying to harm someone. So, uh, but these are great questions. I mean, these are some of these things I haven't heard of. Now, would you, would you have a, some sort of validation process if, if I wanted to, 
you know, sign on as a, a medical response person, would there be some validation to to show that I am actually, in fact, we've, medically trained? We've doc talked about that. that. Actually, one suggestion was, and I don't know who mentioned that. Were you telling me about this, that there's some place where uh, someone you can register as an EMT within a certain radius? Possibly. Okay. Um, is, is I know of things like that. Okay. But, but yes, that I would love to do that. Where you know you show me your you know training certificate or you have a current certification. You know we validate it and you you you, know, you give me some GPS coordinates. Let's say your house and that's where you are. And if someone issues a medical alert within that radius and you're willing or able to help them, then you know they get based on your response they actually get a certified answer back saying hey. You know, Virgil is actually a certified, you know, uh, EMT, and he's only like ten minutes away from helping you. So, again, that that's a great way to uh, give people the assurance that someone actually knows what, what they're doing. And they're on the way to help you. Uh, yeah, uh, great great questions. That's how we make it better. Yeah, you know, ideas from you guys. So, does it work over like a broad? Does it work on broad? Uh, yes, actually, if there is, a, we're using the Google Maps API. So anywhere Google Maps has coverage, like street address information and uh, and turn by turn direction data, it will work. So Which is really good because we've done that, just testing it out, and it does give right. you turn, but it's really great. Yep, and actually, it uses, by the way, on the back end, it uses the Waze data. So if yeah. you're stuck in traffic trying to respond to someone, you also get redirected as well. So it's pretty cool. Uh, one issue we are running into is the app was only designed with English in mind, and uh, also we didn't take into account other measurement like the metric system. So now, I know. So now we have people from the UK uh, bitching about the fact that uh, you know, hey, what's going on with all the miles and you know in, in Europe, right? Too far. We want we want metric system. We want all that. So people in India are complaining about it. Uh, but uh, half a mile too far. I know. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, that's a good problem to have. It is, it is. But but the next it will take probably another month worth of work to uh, rewind because if if you do it right from the beginning, we don't have to deal with it. But we have we didn't think about it. So now we have to go back and edit everything and provide multilingual support. But the good thing is you only do that once. And what you do after that, you upgrade, upload uh, language packages. So if someone want, feels like translating everything into German, yeah. you know they only create one file, upload it into the Play Store, and then. It works, so that would be really good. But those are again, those are good problems to have. I mean, it's the app grew really fast, which is a good sign. You know, the plan is to just get everyone. You know, if a million people use it in five years, I'll be happy. You know, that would be really, really good. Well done, Virgil. Yeah. And by the way, there are more things. Just one last thing. The, the guy from uh, Arcade City. Um, we, uh, you know, he, we had some great, uh, you know, talks about how we can uh, maybe use their API to, if you get a car breakdown type of problem, uh, you can you can hail a rate and arrive straight from cell phone one one without having their app. So that would be nice. So there, there are all kinds of things you can leverage out there. Weather alerts. If you're in an area and you have major severe weather heading your way, it'd be nice to get a cell phone one alert. You know, hey, there's a tornado heading your way. It'd be nice. So Western yeah. counties are flooding again, or something like that. So there's there's ways to to leverage all kinds of public data out there that's free to make the app even better. So. And give me give the app a good a decent yeah. review. You know, if you feel like it's worth it, go to the app store because it helps. So, all right. Well, thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. Hopefully after hearing Virgil, you're just as enthusiastic about Cell 411 as I am. I think it's a very powerful tool and I encourage you to use it and encourage those in your sphere to do the same. Be on the lookout for another video about Cell 411 in the coming weeks when at Liberty Forum I had a chance to pull Virgil aside and ask him some questions. Until then, peace.